Hey there, friends. <clears throat> so I'm starting Operation Pop-Up. <clears throat> I'll be telling you more about it. Um, we're built business model generation, branding. But the bottom line is, given I'm sitting on a valuable curriculum, I don't want to be the bottleneck. It's the usual thing where if you think you are sitting on a pot of gold, you don't want people to look back and say, why were you so selfish? Why didn't you share? And I always think, well, I've done websites out of my own pocket and all kinds of stuff. It's all I do is put my work out there free of charge mostly. But, uh, you know, I do work for money as well sometimes. In other words, people compensate me in various ways. Like for this dog sitting I just did, I got money for that. And I can use that money to uh, pay for a website or something. But I feel doing more is better and because whether it's about me being selfish or not, it's important to get the the message out there. So I've got my YouTube's going, of course, these days, but also on Facebook a little bit, Repl IT, but I think an actual storefront, something more public, even though very local, could do some good catalyzing. So that's what Operation Pop-Up is. We'll talk to you about it more in the near future, like in this very video. I'm just going to make this in clips as the day progresses rather than um, looking back. So this is in the morning of August 11th. And right now what's on my mind is it's bridge pedal day, which means all kinds of cyclists crossing every which way on all of Portland's bridges. So I have to plan a route <clears throat> that I don't get into a, a traffic jam. Now, Sunday is pretty light driving in Portland usually. So with all these bridges closed, we'll see, and uh, I'll let you know. Okay, folks, it's some hours later, and I'm continuing my video about Operation Pop-Up, which is a gallery downtown. And from a from a curriculum point of view, it's important that Oregon and Portland and all of us who are in the know put it out there. Like we're not sitting on this. We are eager to share. At the heart of it is a lot about lattices. So this is a lattice gallery. It's going to be about lattices. But I thought I'd get there slowly through my neighborhood of True Mini Cooper. This is a an outdoor books, um, bargain books place on the corner. That squirrel has a walnut in its mouth, if you see that. It's that time of year, the walnuts are falling everywhere. Late, uh, or early August, actually. Uh, my neighbor, Deke, Deke the Geek, he's <clears throat> having a major yard sale. It's got a lot of good stuff out there. And uh, <clears throat> it's just a few days. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to pack my car. That's that's a good segue there. That's a hexapent pattern, right? Hexagons and pentagons. We can think of it that way anyway. I see in the, right down the ridge, there's a pentagon at the top, and then hexagon, hexagon. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, but that that's definitely a pentagon there. So hexapence is my theme. As, wait, which direction am I going? This way. Is this the way I want to go? I think I want to go the other way. Oh no, there's, so I'm going to take this sage <clears throat> downtown. And I washed these uh, C60 plastic things. <clears throat> this was left over from the graphene molecule that I had propped up against my garage door. <clears throat> It's my backyard. So the graphene sat in direct sunlight for a long time, and some of these hinge, some of the struts are made of a kind of plastic that gets very brittle in the sun, and others, other, other of the struts don't have as much of that problem. They're more rubbery. 
This is the escape pod from Savannah that I mentioned where I'm, when I met Lindsay at Angelo's in Eastern Hawthorne. She still, she'd given up driving. She'd managed to escape to Portland. She'd kind of crash landed on Hawthorne. And now she was politically averse to using peak oil for gadding about. She was going to do everything by bicycle. In the meantime, my car had been totaled and I was looking for another car. So there it is in my driveway. Eventually, she let me have it in exchange for staying as a house guest for a long time. So Zohar and some lamps and some supplies, we're going to set up downtown as a personal workspace. We're going to make C60. We're going to do like a diorama of the pensive cowboy in a personal workspace making C60 because that's work, right? So it's kind of a we work. We're doing it. First, though, we're going to make some C60 right there at the car. We're just going to open the trunk get out the chair, and do some making of C60. I'm getting Earlham College in this because, again, I want to have us on the right side of history. Hexapence for everyone. Of course, the lamp is just a prop. It's not actually plugged into anything. And I've got some Lux blocks there, too, kind of adding a, a good color scheme. If you remember Codesters, it's kind of like doing a color scheme in sort of southwest colors maybe, sky blue or cyan and orange. There's the WeWork headquarters. So we're right across the street from them. That's not my camera, but that alludes to the fact that I'm being a photographer today. There's an alcove, which I realize will be perfect for the smudge ceremony. So this pensive cowboy, he's got a lot of a Native American <clears throat> sort of influence. <clears throat> so <clears throat> once we set up the diorama, we're going to want to do some smudging as well. Checking out the lighting. Some of these supplies have already showed up. We've got a head. This will work well, I think, for a pop-up. And that's WeWorks again. This mural is already there. It's not a mural. It's a screen. And I'm getting my stuff out of the car and set up outside the gallery so I can take it in all at once and set up this sort of campsite. You could say there's the smudge stick in the middle of it all. I haven't lit, I haven't lit it yet. And this represents the product of my labors. But we're also, there's a sub-theme here called marking, marking the turf or marking one's turf or marking my turf. Now, Zohar here in the bubble, we could say he's he's the dude or he's the stand-in. He's the avatar. He's the point of view. So he's the guy who, who's, who's, who's here making this stuff, we could say. Or perhaps he's just a religious icon or some kind of he'll be set aside and the real owner of the space will sit there eventually. But the yellow molecules, right, you get the, the idea of marking turf in the way a dog would mark their turf, right? So they they would basically urinate on a tree or anywhere to mark that this is my turf. And we're kind of alluding to that with this yellow snow installation. In fact, I'll give it that title right now, yellow snow. <clears throat> so that's the white, the black, you could say, stands for the dirt. And so there's the installation. Now, I didn't leave it there. This was just for today. And Sam was leading a meeting. There was a lot to talk about. There's the smudging ceremony. I actually did have it lit for a little bit. Um, pretty cool. Oh, what fun, right? That's what it says on the lighter. I can't tell if it's lit at the moment. Anyway, we didn't do a lot. I didn't want to set off any fire alarms or anything. So this is the inside of the gallery. Beautiful red floors. Um, Zohar's off to the side now. Somebody's put his hat down and a satchel. And there's the Allen wrench that I brought. So it's out of focus, but if you want to do C60, it's best to have an Allen wrench of this size to tighten things up. And so there's more of this installation marking 
marking my turf. It's got a plug there right in the floor, it looks like. So I could have plugged in that lamp, but actually there's no bulb in that lamp, truth be told. There's Zoar by himself. Don't worry, guy. I won't leave you there. He's battery powered, and I ran him. I let him do a couple of his routines <clears throat> for the amused onlookers. So yeah, we had a good meeting, and the gallery is not set to open any time, like, imminently. But we are getting getting our money's worth already just by getting these photo ops. So I look forward to seeing some of you there. We'll have some events and a grand opening and all a work in progress. But we're getting the curriculum known through a storefront so even if OMSI isn't up for showcasing the whole number of volumes there's kind of a hexapence for everyone going on somewhere in Portland and maybe OMSI will be interested in this because we brought up OMSI a few times in the meeting in terms of how didactic do we want to be how much is this a teaching exhibit and how much is this like how much is this like a science museum how much is this a STEM kind of exhibit? And that's a question we look at in the Oregon Curriculum Network all the time, right? We always look at the CP Snow chasm and which side of it are we on and is there even a chasm anymore? So those kind of questions. All right, talk to you soon.